Okay, so before we get into the podcast today, I just want to thank our January sponsor. And for all our podcasts and our video content, our January sponsor is Mayflower Brewery. Uh, we love everyone there. They're so nice. They do amazing things for the community. They make great beer. Uh, their porter is unprecedented. Uh, love and Wrestling's great. Uh, if you like sours, uh, Resistance is Fruitiles, phenomenal. They let us record here. Uh, they're just so supportive of, of us, and we love everyone at Mayflower Brewery. If you happen to be in the Plymouth area, if you're not, ask your local bar, your local uh, uh, liquor store to carry Mayflower beer. Uh, it's great stuff. You'll love them. You'll love their beer. And uh, I think I'm going to go get another Mayflower beer right now. in that bathtub commercial. No. Oh. Jesus Christ, can you not touch it? Fish, you're a little too young for that. <laughs> Nicole, you can do that all day long. Yeah, you don't touch it. I'll handle it. Thank I'll you. The, I have the skills. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me that wasn't being recorded. <laughs> uh, yeah. all right. Right. Welcome back to the Bar Talk Podcast. Uh, we are here today at the Mayflower Brewery, and we are here with uh, the Hungover Dan Mahoney. What's up? I'm hitting uh, my stride. I'm you, getting there. All right, you're, you're coming out of <laughs> yeah, it. Either I'm gonna kill myself. It's one or the other. One of those two things. <laughs> uh, we are with the accident-prone Jordan Chabot. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are here with Nicole from Three B. Hey guys. And uh, unbeknownst to me, who snuck in at seven and a half feet tall, you might see him play for the uh, Boston Celtics in his uh, Hawaiian festive holiday attire, Carl the Heine. Hello, everybody. <laughs> that's it. No, that's all he's going to say. Um, so, Nicole actually had a request for a topic that we bring up. Carl. Karen's! Karen's! Carl, what's a Karen? Your sister's name Karen? I do have a sister named Karen. Oh, I'm I sorry, Karen. I'm in so much fucking trouble. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Karen. It's not about you. Uh, Nicole, can you She actually gave me name? this shirt. Can you explain to Carl <laughs> what a Karen is? So Karen might be in, like, her early 50s, early 60s, somewhere between 45 and 65. It's her hairstyle. She has a very short, sassy haircut. Um, she might demand bread. She might want to speak to the manager. She might hate everything that comes her way. And she might tip 10%. She did, might did my sister really go to your restaurant? Because <laughs> 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 you were like, just, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> habits, and she seems, she seems definitely sassy. I <laughs> but she grew up with you, so. Um, but that pretty much fucking makes yeah, <laughs> 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 Karen Heine. <laughs> she's not Karen Heine, right? She's married, so. Yeah, she's married. So you can call her Karen Heine. It will be her code name that nobody knows what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a sweetheart. Uh, so, Karen's are a thing. They infiltrate restaurants. Um, what, is, what is your issue with Karen's? I feel like you have an axe to grind. Uh, I do. So, okay, so it's the daytime, imagine. And Karen doesn't have, like, a full-time job. Karen can go out with her friends on a Tuesday for lunch. Karen walks into the restaurant. She has a problem with the music you're playing. She probably has a problem with the lighting. If you seat her at a table, it's not the table she wants. So when Karen walks in, you you have to assess that she's Karen, and then say, Karen, you know what? I'm going to let you pick your seat. I'm going to put the ball in your court, because nothing you do will be right. And then from there on, your server will suffer and suffer and suffer until something is comped off their bill. The hot soup they didn't touch for 10 minutes is now cold, and they don't want to eat it. Because it came out cold, right? It came out cold. 
came out cold because, you know, soup doesn't the degrade in heat. The gazpacho came out cold. <laughs> <laughs> soup definitely doesn't degrade in heat for every moment you let it pass in the wintertime without touching it. So, Karen's going to need that comped off her bill. So, does Karen think it is either too hot or too cold, and then you pretend to adjust the heat? You put that shit in the fucking microwave. I mean, like, I mean, the <laughs> and give it back to her. Put that in the microwave. <laughs> put Karen in the microwave. <laughs> no, because Karen's on Yelp as soon as she sits down. Yeah. And now, see, yeah. I don't think that's a Karen. To me, that's a Lauren. Ooh, what? Lauren. Why? Ooh, Why Lauren? Lauren. You grew up with a Karen, so maybe you have a different. Why? Well, Lauren? that that to me, you described would be named Lauren. Yeah. That's okay. A that's a. A Kathy. Kathy, yeah. yeah. It's a Kathy. Sorry, I know there's some good Kathys out there, but that's a Kathy for me. Oh. Dan? Yep. I, I like Karen. Karen. Maybe because I like to call my girlfriend Karen when she's being paid at the restaurant. <laughs> she does not approve. <laughs> she sells Mona Via side juice. She knows how to do She is service. not in a pyramid scheme. She's in a multi level marketing <laughs> business. <laughs> She has a convertible, sure. Wait, I'm, it's, a, it's a LeBaron, I'm, but it's still a convertible. I'm confused. Are we talking about Dan's girlfriend? Or <laughs> Karen? <laughs> I definitely think I'm a few beers behind. I'm f- well, I've only had one today. Up, like, yeah. <laughs> I got the washing machine. Yeah, but Dan's yeah. recycling from yesterday. Yeah, I have a couple from yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I reactivated what was yep. in my belly from last night. So, uh, Lauren? Lauren, that would describe a Lauren. Or a Laurie, maybe. Lori. Lori. My mom's name's Lori. Basically, my mom. Not Lori. Lori. She's a sweet Lori. Lori with an Lori. O. Lori. Well, I'm from. Everything's war with me, so. Are you Portuguese? From Far River. I'm the only person from Far River without a drop of Portuguese blood in me. Oh, it's a shame. A rarity. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> are, there, are there types of stereotypical customers that you can describe by one name? Uh, how 100%. Ab- how about this? Do you know that customer as soon as they walk in the door? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, like well, what, not what every is, single time, but what I would the, say a high percentage. Yes. yes. What is the telltale sign? A d- haircut. Haircut. I don't haircut. know. I was gonna say. I was gonna say almost yeah. attitude walking in. You yeah. can tell when Body they walk language. in. Well, the hair is yeah. the attitude. Yeah. Um, I know the owner. Yeah. yeah. Um, is he here? And then. Jared. Yeah. Jared. I know the owner, Jared. He and then, speed and then what I have, what, what I tell <laughs> my staff to do, if, oh, the, if they ever ask and say, you know, I know the owner, are they there? And I have them say yes. And they say, oh, can you ask him to come out? And I have them disappear and they come back and says, he says he's too busy to come out for you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yep. And merely, that'll take him down a peg. Takes him right down a peg. <laughs> so, I, 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 I... Can I tell a good I know sure. the owner story? Yeah. Uh, this is not... This is on the other side of the table. So, this goes back... I knew the owner. <laughs> no, sort of. Um... So my father had his regular spot that he stopped at every day, had a couple beers after work, and uh, the bartenders, you know, they're bartenders, they give you shit, and they're like, well, where's your wife, blah, 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 and he'd be like, oh, I keep her chained at home in the basement, was always his go-to answer. So fast forward a few years, um, we go to this new restaurant, it's me, my wife at the time, and my mother... My mother finds out who owns a restaurant, and it was one of the bartenders that used to be at his regular spot. So she goes to the waitress, she's like, can you go tell the owner that the woman who's chained in the basement is here? (laughs) And the waitress is like, what the fuck? So she goes back and she goes, there's a woman who says she's been chained in the basement? Oh my god, she's here? (laughs) She made it! She got out. So sometimes it pays off. So how you deliver that message that you know the owner. Right. If you, I mean, if you are doing it in a way where you're not looking for a fucking handout, you're doing it like I. It's like when I go into New World, I'm like, "It's Carl here." They're like, "Yeah." I'm like, "All right, I'm going to Speedwell." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you. He's at Speedwell. You, know, <laughs> you just want to support and like be part of the team and so like that. That's one thing. But like, I hate the people that come in and don't actually know like an owner and they act like they like do. they just met yeah. you like one time. Right, because yeah. they want a stronger drink and a special treatment, and they're getting the exact opposite. And I tell my staff this. I've said this on this podcast before. Anyone that comes in and drops my name is not a real friend, you give them half as much attention. Because I don't want them there. I'm, they're, they're looking for a handout. They don't want to spend money anyway. Right? Yeah. I, I hate that shit. And it's I, usually a counter. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
same. I work for a restaurant where everyone in Plymouth, quote unquote, knows the owner, and I vet every person who says that. Oh, you're you're his aunt. Let me go see if I can get in touch with him. And I walk right out back where I know he's standing and be like, Karen? Apparently I have an Aunt Karen. And they're like, no, I don't. I'm like, <laughs> she mispronounced her last name wrong, too, so I'm sure she's Have you ever, nobody. like, had the urge to be like, oh, my God, he passed away two days ago? <laughs> <laughs> no, but now I do. He's on the whole new chapter. Yeah. What, a, what a nice young lad he <laughs> was. <use> that? <laughs> Come on, they not? can't be like, oh, I know the owner, and you're like, I passed away two days ago. No, I'll just say he passed away, because <laughs> they obviously don't know who I am. All right. Is Josh here? You know, the owner? No, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he got electrocuted yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, the, Very believable. I'm the owner he's now. Up on the roof in sandals. <laughs> <laughs> Playing golf in a lightning storm. <laughs> Carl, you had to be here for the first podcast. Yeah, that one. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, I'm kind of glad I missed it. Jordan's <laughs> a walking accident. <laughs> Carl knows he's seen some. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, Carl, we were talking earlier. What's up with the Yoda drink? Oh, yeah, there's a baby Yoda drink out there now from uh, the Mandalorian. And uh, I think uh, I'm going to put it out there because my wife's said. a big fan of that little baby thing. <laughs> That's why she married you. <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> That's a visual joke that no one will get. Uh, so, are you putting it on the menu? Yeah, well, you know, you go with what's hot. Yeah. If it sells, it's on the menu. What's in it? It's like an apple martini with a couple of Ooh. black olives. Uh, I mean, Ooh. black um, cherry. Oh, oh, oh. black cherries. <laughs> that went from food. Oh, very quick. You can say Sorry. black olives. <laughs> it's actually the black cherries and then a maraschino cherry for the mouth and then two limes two for the limes ears inside. you broke the guess Carl <laughs> alright so I feel like uh, this is perfect time for questions Five minutes because we're going to get hate mail now <laughs> oh, god. oh god Carl I'm so glad you made it <laughs> Thanks for having me again. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> I can't. Well, all right, let's go to questions. Right, yeah, we're yeah. We're going to go to questions. So uh, you guys wrote in, and we're going to answer them, or something like an answer. And he's going to put you your names. Yeah, I'm going to ruin everything about what you wrote But not in. the hard ones. Yeah. John so, uh, Pete Grant. Huh? Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Look at that. Nailed it. All American. Curious. It's all downhill from here. I know we all make good drinks. But oh. I had a moment two years ago oh, when I realized there's a difference between a mixologist and a bartender. 100%. I think, I think the mixologist only cares about the drink. The bartender always cares about the people. If you have a job you're good at, if you have if you have the job you are good at, the job, simple. That That is not me. That is what it says. I don't believe it. It's you. But <laughs> if there was a mixology versus bartender chart, where would you rank yourself. If you call yourself a mixologist, you're a fucking tool. <laughs> <laughs> 100! <laughs> I was going to say that, but I didn't know if we had some mixologists out uh, there. No, you're world. not a mixologist. There's no fucking... You don't get a fucking... Is there a master's degree in bartending? No. No, then you're not a fucking mixologist. Well, I'm Shut sure you can pay up. for one, but... Yeah. Sure. That, 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 that kid who... Assholes. Jordan, that kid who comes to your bar Jordan, to buy you as a bartender it? who says, I've been to bartending school. Do you not, like, judge them? I, I judge I, them. I'm like, at least they've been a oh. school, but right, right. But I think at least you they're trying. The right, right. They, they right. That's the right correct. Way. But a lot of people won't hire without well, the experience, wrong. and you can't get experience. Yeah. So this is the only way that they can get their right. foot in the you door. Right. So at least they, yeah, it, at right. least they tried to do it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So they have, you know, a little right. bit of idea what's going just on. Because you bought your own fucking jigger doesn't make you a mixologist. Like, right. There's no such thing as a mixologist. Like. I, I, it drives me nuts because, like I said, there's no master's degree in bartending. Yeah, so where's, is, then I, then where's the line Sorry. between a bartender and a mixologist? Can you be a little bit of a mixologist? A mixologist is as realistic as a fucking dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and a I bartender, like... is, there's experienced bartenders, there's bartenders that are good at mixing drinks. There's better bartenders than other, better bar t- uh, other bartenders. There's no such thing as a mixologist. That's like calling me an accidentologist. <laughs> I, will, like, I will say, yeah, you so. <laughs> I work with. So I will say, give the devil their due. I work with um, a bar manager. He's a psalm. And I will say he's 110% better at coming up with inventive, 
creative drinks than I am. Yes. But I can annihilate and make his drinks a hundred times better than him. Sorry, Vin, if you're listening. <laughs> um, but, like, he's really good at putting ingredients together. But he's not, like, that douchey guy who's right. going to be like, ooh, yeah. I'm a mixtologist. Right. He's just, like, he's just creative in that in a way that I necessarily not am, where he'll create the drinks and then I can I can replicate them immediately. So I guess, like, that's my idea of, like, a normal mixologist. Yeah, you're more creative than the person that can perfect any drink that they're given the recipe for. Right. You come up with that recipe. See, I would just say that's a more creative bartender. Correct. Yeah. And you're a more efficient bartender. And then there's a bartender... But I don't need a jigger. I'm just like, ah, oh, okay. You right. said You said it comes with point seven five ounces. I'm just going to do, like, a fucking big splash. Because you I don't know. For a long yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't make you a mixologist. It doesn't make him a mixologist. Right. His strengths are different. You have certain chefs that are really good at creating dishes, but you put them on a line and it takes them uh, 45 minutes to get a dish out, and then you have the other way around where there's these guys that go home and eat mac and cheese every night out of a blue box, but they can get your dishes out in 10 minutes and they're right, efficient right. and clean. So they're, they're all cooks, you know what I mean, in my, in my eyes. But like the difference between that is like a chef can go to school and study and get a certification like to be called a chef. There's no, as far as I know, there's no, no. and you can call it a chef. Maybe there's a liquid chef out there, you know what I mean? But mixologist is such a fucking buzzword. I hate it so much. It is. And that's, and that's what it is. It's just kind of like a significa- sig- signification, a way to signify it. Right. Um, you know, you can be a brewer at Budweiser and a brewer here at Mayflower, and that's not the same thing. It's a, no, 100%. The, Jay, who is, the, uh, who is one of the brewers here now, yeah. um, he's opened up his own brewery. And, um, he's, where, uh, he likes to be called a brewologist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he hates the term brewmaster because brewmasters were people who trained in Germany and the Czech, and it was, it was a skill handed down by generation to generation, and that's how they got that name. Now any asshole with a fucking five-gallon brew pail at home calls himself a brewmaster because he didn't filter his beer and he came out with some IPA, that's that's not a term you just throw around. It has to be earned. And that's the same thing. Just because you know how to boil water and throw some hops and, and barley into a, a thing doesn't make you a brewmaster. So that, so we're going to start the Bar Talk School of Mixology, is what you're saying? Make millions, because a lot of people <laughs> apparently, apparently out there... Well, like I mean, instead of calling them a mixologist, we should come up with the, the next generation term for that. What, I what? call him a hardo. <laughs> like... You're trying too hard, man. Just, like, give the people what they want. Stop trying to force your idea of what you think a good drink is on people, you know what I mean? And call yourself... Or reinventing the wheel. Right, Like, we all like the same things. Right. You don't need to, like, light this on fire and import this and and do that. I don't want anything in my drink that you have to bruise. Right. But but here's the other thing. It's like, if I... my ego. If I go to (laughs) Speedwell or New World, you're pulling a tap handle for me. Correct. If I go to a place, say, Mal Bar or something more high-end, yeah, take ten minutes to make my drink. I think he just called us low-end. No, <laughs> oh, no, I'm no. a low-end bartender, for sure. Ask right. me how to make a Scooby snack. Ask me how to make a nuclear holocaust. That was a Scooby snack. <laughs> <laughs> a Scooby snack. <laughs> I'm going into 3B and getting a Scooby snack. Don't go into 3B to get that. Go to San Diego to get that. Um, no, but I, I guess it's the environment you're going into. Like, I respect the bartenders that are able to do those things, and, and they call themselves bar- the self-respecting ones. Call, call themselves, themselves bartenders. bartenders. Yeah, it's just and a different And they're really venue. good at what they do, and they can do things that I would never even think of. Tasty is another one. It's a hipster name for oh, a bartender. Yes. Right, right. So right. people are into things now, and they want to try new things. People's palates are getting more intermediate, and that's completely awesome. Like, that's what we're in this for, is to, like, learn and try new things. If we all just went out and got bottles of beer every day, everyone would just sit at home and drink. It's a lot cheaper that way. So you're going out for the experience. But that pretentious sort of attitude that we're losing hospitality and you have to be more important than the person walking in to patron your place, I hate that. And mixology, the word right. mixologist is part of that culture. Well, I will tell you, I went into um, a restaurant a couple of weeks ago and asked for a pretty basic drink. I asked for, I think, like a Grey Goose Martini and they were like... Um, we only have, and named off these couple of vodkas, I had two vodkas I had never heard of. And I was like, okay, can you, like, tell me the difference? And it was very, like, because I didn't know, right. it's I was delivery. putting them yeah. off. Condescending. It was very condescending, and I'm like, listen, I work in restaurants. Oh, we don't say Oh, that. I will never say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will never say. 
No I, I will. <laughs> <laughs> we only carry one vodka. A lot of different <laughs> Mitch's vodka. A lot of different labels on those bottles, but it's all one. It's all the same. It's all Poland Springs. <laughs> but it was like I've never felt like I was less of a person than in this bar because I'm like I just want a basic martini. See, I'm and at that point, I'd just be like. Great. I'll see you later. We did, honestly, we were, we were we were one well, and done. The would say, "Well, I like this one better." You know, yeah. if you ask me, I, I would say I like this one or better. Or just the person, or just, yeah. really or just be like, "This one is the most similar to Greg's. Right. Right. Yeah, right. It was Which like, is really what you want. Yeah. And and nobody's gonna know. Right. Yeah. But it was just like, oh, you're not a, you're not that like mentality of you only know like the, the the hipster small swanky batch, small batch right, stuff. You seem like we were. I felt, I felt put off. I'm like, right. I don't even know if I want to be here. Like, it's not that I'm not open to new things. I'll do new things. I think like local is a really important thing. Um, I know at 3V we do a lot of dirty water stuff. Yeah. Dirty water is in one of our most popular drinks. I love that. I love hyping them up. But at the same time, if you want Tito's, I have Tito's. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you shouldn't make somebody feel bad for not for not being on that level. Unless they like country music, then fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I just posted something to our Instagram. Oh, look at you. We have an Instagram. We, well, yeah, we have an Instagram. Was it of Jordan's and, injuries? And, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I got this picture in, and I was very curious. It made me laugh at first. Um, but then I wondered about the legality of it. So I'm going to like show you guys on the couch first, and then Jordan. Uh, so it's a white claw claw machine. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, fantastic. Love it. Badass. So, so bad. is that something that's even legal? Yeah, why not? I don't know. I don't know. What you? Th- what is illegal about it? I don't... It reminds me of cigarette machines. They're still not illegal. Really? I no, just, I just those feel... are illegal. In yeah, mass. just because yeah. anybody can walk up to it, you can't ID someone. So you're saying this white claw and the white claw thing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so God, you, go in, you go in. You go into. You go into a bar that they <laughs> ID and it's 21 plus. Door, yeah, yeah, you get exactly. caught at the door. Oh, I was supposed to get caught at the door. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think of that. I just thought it was really funny because it was a white claw claw machine. The only thing I'd say is like, what you. stops? Like, say, I cut you off. What stops you, you from, from going white claw machine? machine? Yeah. All I know is I mean, like, you're going to have to wait 20 you. minutes after you grab one because you're going to be pretty shaken up. And the other thing is, you're going to spend like $12 to get one white claw. Yeah, exactly. I think it's more of the novelty. It's pretty badass, so it's pretty yeah. You should get one. All right. Maybe. So this one is from Kyle Travis Peterson. Oh, look at two for two. Two for two. Uh, I'm going to fuck up. How did I fuck up Travis Peterson? No, I said if you fuck up. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm going to fuck up the question because that's what I do. Uh, quick question. I bartend a few nights a month in Illinois in a town I I, I, I am in is being very... It, it may be the way they write this. I am in is being very liberal with the legalization of dope, which is a weird thing to call Weed, it. Yeah, dope, is, yeah. dope can mean a lot of things. <laughs> yes. so, which I totally love. While I am not a manager, the owner is very uh, close friend of mine, blah, blah, blah. This is not a quick so, question. It's yeah. not at all. This like, goes on and on. So I'm what confused he's, already. So let's paraphrase. Let's Travis. go Travis. Uh, Travis, I'm going to like just get to the point. People walk in and smell like weed. Oh, okay. Is it a problem? I know owners in town here who hate it and, like, complain about it repeatedly. Mm. Like, customers or employees? Co- well, you, customers. Coming in, sitting at your bar, you smelling like pumped. Pumped. Jordan should be pumped. Like, I, many, I don't mind at all. How many chicken wings yeah. are you going to get? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to tell you the, the few reasons why I like it. They're going to eat a lot more. We know that. Yep. We've covered that. But it's also a nice way to kind of flag yourself for the bartender to know that you're already kind of on something. Oh, that's not... Yeah, I never thought you know of that. what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I don't care. And it might be offensive to some of the customers, but it's just as offensive as an old lady coming in with too much cheap perfume on. You know what I mean? It's not that big of a deal or a loud baby or whatever. So, I like it when we know who's fucking baked out of their mind. And I, I have to say, if I didn't allow people coming in smelling like weed... I'd be close. Because <laughs> my staff, like, everybody, and it's legal now, so it's like, whatever. But yeah, it's a good way for them to flag themselves so we can be like, yo, just get that guy, like, one PBR and see how fast he drinks it. And well, usually they won't even finish a beer. The, eat the super stone people are usually not going to be your, your issue. No, people. they're great. <laughs> yeah. They mellowed out, they chill, they come in, they eat a lot, they usually just zone out on their phones for a little while. Yep. The edibles are a little bit more tricky because you don't know, they don't smell, and they hit harder. Takes yeah. They're a little bit more delayed. And if they're drinking while on edibles, 
we've had a couple instances where like somebody was like really really sleepy at the bar, you know what I mean, and they had one beer, so you know. <laughs> has that happened Wait, to you, Fish? fish? That happen? Has that happened to you, Fish? <laughs> <laughs> so funny story. <laughs> Your mom doesn't listen to this, right? Okay, not. <laughs> uh, I just found out my mom listens to this podcast. Really? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so, they, so, so maybe we should go to the next <laughs> question. No, so, Melanson. Hi, Mrs. Melanson. Uh, our biggest fan. <laughs> so, uh, Fish got super high, and we're sitting at the bar, and he turns to me and goes, is anyone out on the deck? And I'm looking, I'm like, no, no one's on the deck. I'm going to go lay down for a bit. I'm like, no, you can't <laughs> fucking do that. That's not a thing you can do. Best day ever. Awesome. <laughs> Until I thought I was going to have to carry my mother. So did you change your name? No. My How come your mother's... Divorced. Yeah. So she took her maiden name back. So she said three different names? She's had a multiple different names. That's a different podcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carl, how do you feel about uh, we sponsoring Fish Sunday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I'm old school. That was it's it's it, not my cup of tea out there, but I know I can't stop it. So just go with it. I mean, definitely not worried about the weed smokers. I'm more worried about different party drugs that are out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, it's not, it's, and, I think the question is, do you mind them coming in oh, no. yeah. and like, no. like pot? No. And this is my thing. is like, I've seen people complain about this. I'm like, what about people who reek of cigarettes? Right. Oh, I, like, that reek tends of to be cigarettes. More. Yeah, but close. there's not a lot of people that... Uh, but well, you, vaping the, the Mary inside. Jane is a little worse than the... Uh, uh, but see, I, I disagree. Because people will yeah. go out okay, well, and have a cigarette and You can disagree in. all you want. You're wrong. I don't think so. I think it's just as common now. Because they'll, yeah. they'll go outside. No, but I think I think you could you could smell weed off somebody much more than you can. But smell the, it's cigarettes. the pe- What about the pens that they're doing inside? Right. Well, that's that's that's, the, that's like the yeah. new level of it. I, I think it's different pen. than like smoking weed or cigarettes outside. It's like the you know when that, that first came out, it was an issue, but I haven't seen it in quite a while. Full of, well, because it's like a van. but not a lot. It's a big thing we deal with. Yeah, in Boston, and I like to tell my door guys to take them away from the people. Like Just you, slap you it out of their hand. Get them after, get them after class. Okay, yeah. Let the host stand for you. Yeah, they're smoking inside the establishment, same thing. Leave yep. or leave it at the bar. Like, yeah. You can't be trusted. Yep. I mean, we have those individual person bathrooms, too, so that every time I go to use the bathroom, I go in, you can tell someone's been hitting their fucking vape in there. There's nothing I can do about yeah. it. Yeah. Right. You know, but... All right, uh, so this next one is from Eric Quinty. Ooh, that's a hard one right there. For yeah, three for three. Uh, this one, I... Kind of was. Where it get, where yeah, it this is yeah. where it fucks up. Right? <laughs> I hate you guys. Um, besides drinking every night, Eric, you might have an issue. Uh, what are some ways to get over the legs and hips being sore every day for an attorney? Pain away. <laughs> not, a, not a sponsor. Yes. I'm thinking that you know, if your legs and hips are hurting. God bless you, baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're making. Right you're making you know that paper. If you're not like Carl's mic stand, then you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to get that. <laughs> Flopping. <laughs> the flop. But how do you deal with those, uh, you know, when you're on your feet all day, how do you deal with those things? Get, uh, new, get so, new shoes. Yeah, take yeah. an aspirin. Yeah. Next question. Yeah. Drink a lot of water while you're working. We've yeah. covered that Magnesium. Before, so. yeah. yeah. I've heard. I do magne- Magnesium. Take it easy on your day off. Don't binge. Hey, honestly, like a massage therapist once in a while is a good idea. It sounds, everyone thinks massage therapy is like a luxury, like it's something you do to like relax. Let's go. Listen, this isn't massage one-on-one. It's do, bar do talk. Some, do some, some, fucking do some yeah. yoga. Yeah. Yoga. Yeah. Well, uh, do beer water. yoga. yoga beer yoga, 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 Mr. Yeah. Bartender. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this one is Megan Edwards. I fucking picked all the easy names. Right. <laughs> he's, not even, he's not even the real Only right in the view know. of an easy <laughs> name. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Uh, so Meg is a bartender in uh, England. Hello. And she's coming to the U.S., <laughs> uh, New York, and D.C. What can I expect? What is typical American drinking etiquette? I'm 22, been a heavy drinker, sorry, uh, for four years from a non-tipping society, and I don't really know anything about tipping at all. Any do's, don'ts, 
greatly appreciated. Be the nicest. Like, that is your one-way ticket to getting the good tips. Make your regulars. No, no, make no, no, no she's tipping. Oh, she's here. tipping. She's yeah, not getting so, tipped. Like, yeah, I thought so, she was like, a bartender. No, so only America tips. No, I know that. Yeah. I thought she, I th- I'm misunderstood. I thought she was a bartender coming here to work. No, she's basically like she's, she's going to come up. tip. How do I do it without looking like an asshole? Yeah. Oh, you tip twenty percent, you'd be all right. Yeah, twenty yeah. percent is the rule. Yep. Yeah. Unless you get a mixologist and it takes ten minutes making your drinks, and yeah. you, you need to tip a little bit more. Bruising yeah, your yeah, grapes yeah. or whatever the hell they do. <laughs> or you could oh, literally be like, I, I, I. You could be. I'm a bartender from England. We don't tip. Just be yeah, honest, do man. That. Yeah. Really. Yeah, because no. that's. Why somewhere. would you do that? You're not in England. You're in, if you were in England, yeah. But if you go to the. No, she no, knows. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is. I feel like she knows that we tip. That's but, why but, no, she no, shouldn't be asking the question. I'm not saying okay. don't tip. I when you, you sit down, you'd be like, hey, how do things work here? I'm well, from she's out of town. Us, so she doesn't have to do that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you don't ask it for you. Yeah, but have you talked to you guys? You get some wing nut at the bar. She's going to say, oh, it's cash. You get a you get a bottled beer that takes a second. Dollar, dollar drink, a minimum. Yeah. Minimum, yeah. Dollar minimum dollar drink. Dollar drink is fair. Yeah. yeah, especially if it's like if you're like in a bud in a fucking bottle and they pop the cap. Yeah, that's a yeah. Bottle. Yeah. yeah. Dollar yeah. A drink. And they're nice to you. A don't, dollar. Don't flag people down. Don't yeah. Down. They Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. You always tip if she's hot. Excuse me. <laughs> it's just a thing. You tell me what you want. It's a thing. Uh, your uh, wait, what was it? The creepy guy? Uh, what was the creepy Jay? <laughs> creepy Jay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> creepy Jay? Oh, like you've never tipped a bartender because you saw it? Yeah, maybe when she, I she was okay. really hot. Awesome. <laughs> I get tips. Yeah, the stash. I yeah, this Hawaiian shirt on. <laughs> I get tips so because I'm creepy. <laughs> it's true. You get tips to you go. The wink and the double guns. <laughs> if he winks oh and double God. guns at you, oh, uh, <laughs> no, no, uh, Tyler Jorbin. Uh, posted today. He's like, I just saw. I some, saw it. Some he did. He double guns and put them back in his holsters. Put them in holsters <laughs> in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Plymouth Industry Rent Rant is the best. I never wanted to be in a place more. Eat it at America's hometown. Yeah. Throw it out in front of the show. Love you, awesome. Tyler. All right, so this is Sarah Beth. Told you all the easy ones. Yep. <laughs> but it's a long one, so I'm gonna fuck Funny it up. Funny that you're. You should read it and sum it up. All right. So, uh, to I was telling my boyfriend stories about gross shit customers do. Here's three short stories. Lady having lunch with a friend, cutting her fingernails at the table while they're eating. Uh, bar shift, washing glasses, beer glass looked at empty, looked at, looked empty, uh, and was surprised to, when I flipped it over that uh, chew spit oozed out. Uh, oh, that's last, that's yeah, normal. That. Last but normal not least, uh, 20, 21 year old that couldn't hold their liquor, three shots, two beers. Later, I had to clean up half digested food off the urinal. Um, yeah, that's... So, feel free to share your gross stories. Uh, you have to listen to our podcast about safety, which would have been like two weeks ago. Um, I have a story about a form, uh, of an employee of Dan's former place of employment. We already told the story. Yeah, leaving his false teeth in the fucking yep. glass, and my bartender had to pick it out of the ice strainer because uh, we have a dump what? sink with a strainer in it. And he was like, "Dude, did you just dump that cup?" And she's like, "Yeah, we're closed." Because of course he was the last person drinking there, and he she had to fish out his false teeth from the strainer. No, well, they make plastic gloves for that, right? Yeah. You're touching someone's false fucking it's teeth, so dude. You're not signing up for that when you're a bartender. <laughs> That's gross. Nicole, yeah, story. Listen. A gross story. I had cleaned everything in was my this bar. Was the bartender was laying on the bar doing body shots? Oh, that might have... That, oh. <laughs> Plead the fifth. <All> right. um, <laughs> I'm going to even skip over all the toilet plungings to go to... Um, what, the, what the hell was I going to say? Um, oh, I, was cle- I had cleaned my entire bar. Spotless. Spotless. And these kids were sitting at the end by, like, all my... Cl- I had reset up all my bar tools, all my shakers, everything, my mats. And all of a sudden, they hear a splash. And I look over my shoulder, and I was like, Did you just projectile over oh. all my clean shit? Oh. And this kid was like, Oh, I'm so sorry! Oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, Get this kid out of here! Oh. You guys your tab. You just spit out. I couldn't tell if he coughed or laughed. Spit. All projectiled was it, all. Was it throw up or was it just just beer? If there's a splash, there's it was a just lot. A, it was a, it was a splash. <laughs> it was a splash of whatever fluid came 
from inside of his body, and I oh. don't wish to know. But it was like end of the night, reclean everything in his corner, cash out, go the fuck home, don't come back. Oh, yeah, fuck. yeah, Girl. that was recent. You know, I I, I, recent. I can't <laughs> I can't really think of anything that uh, you know hasn't happened to all of us. I know, right? I used to have. Um, I think I've told this story too. The floor drains. Um, it was a downstairs bar at the bar I used to work at, and they back pitched all the drain pipes from the bathroom, so they would get clogged real easily. And when they did, and we were really busy, shit used to come up from the floor drains. Actual uh, shit or actual human? Yep. Shit. Oh! Guess, <laughs> I can't. Guess who was the general manager that had to be there till three in the morning mopping it? Oh, that's terrible. This guy. The worst part about it was it was a grinder that was where all the shit went to that would get clogged too. And when that thing didn't get enough water to it because it was coming up the drains, it was this weird, screwed up thing. It would just sit there and grind like solid matter. So I'd pop the hood off of that, and it would just <laughs> ground human shit. And, toilet, and I would have to like take a broomstick and free it and mop that. Too. Why are your stories ten times worse than everybody else's? <laughs> <laughs> So this is apropos nothing, because I just saw this, and don't ask me why. Oh. I was at a bar one time, and these 21-year-olds came in, and they brought their own snacks. Now, it wasn't the BBC where you would, like, get Bring that. snacks, yeah. <laughs> so it was, like, a <laughs> restaurant and bar, and they brought in, like, pretzel sticks, and, like, is that... A... What would you do in that situation? Say, oh. dude... Can't eat your own food here, kid. Unless it's a baby, like like a, like a young toddler. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're not bringing yeah, yeah. cheers. Twenty something. Twenty one. Yeah. The kitchen, or the kitchen's closed. If the kitchen was closed, I'm like, hey, they're eating something while drinking. That's okay, yeah. I guess. You know what I mean? I don't want them like ordering food from a neighboring restaurant. Nah, even then, maybe I might let it go. No, you can't. I mean, technically. Well, if my kitchen's closed. Yeah. If my kitchen's closed and like they order food from San Diego's is right next door to us and they're open till midnight, so if someone ordered like a burrito at eleven o'clock and my kitchen's been closed since ten. Just because they're hungry and then maybe they just got out of work and they want to have a beer at my bar but eat San Diego's food. We're so helping each really other out. I'm with that. Right? Yeah, I don't, but if the kitchen's open, I have a problem. Yeah. I'm like, you gotta, you gotta. That's a different story a for sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like we've we've experienced that a lot though from Sam's where people call and take out, or especially like at Main Street. There's an awesome band, their kitchen's yeah. closed, we're gonna get takeout, bring it over there. I'm like, honestly, that's awesome. You're kind of like, you're helping two places at once. A, you're giving me food sales. Right. B, you're supporting a local band, another local restaurant whose kitchen doesn't happen to be open. Right. Everyone kind of wins. Right. Um. But but then again, like you said, our kitchen's open, theirs isn't. So it's a different story. Yeah. If someone comes in at three o'clock in the afternoon. I have a bunch of tables full, and someone takes up a table, cracks out a bag of Doritos, and doesn't order food. To Completely to different story, you know, yeah. That I'm paying money for, I got a little fucking problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, so this one is from Jennifer... Jennifer... Oh, there we go, there we go. Padilla? Yes, the Andy, I know. Padilla? Casadilla? Sure. I feel like this is a question we've Padilla. addressed. Uh, you think so? Padilla? Yeah, Padilla. <laughs> Padilla. for the Red Sox. Padilla. Padilla. All right, so I don't watch Red Sox, so I don't know that. Uh, so I feel like we've had a similar question to this before, but we're going to ask it again. Uh, what's your thoughts on one of the owners deciding he wants a bartend uh, wants to wants to bartend and taking full cut of the tips? Is Ooh. it legal? I feel like it's uh, that. Might, that might be state to state, but from so my the legality is always kind of tough because it is. Explain that situation again. What is so the owner doing? Decided. Well, this is perfect. Is so New you're World. About, you're known over bartends. New so World. So, yeah. uh, right. Roman bartends sometimes. Yep. So do you. Yeah. Yeah, I used to. Carl? Yep. Yeah, Wednesdays. All the time, baby. Mondays, Wednesdays, Those Thursdays. Tips. Do you take the tips? Yeah. You earn them. Yeah, See, it's, it it's funny because in the same town... What am I going to do with them? Donate them to charity. <laughs> He's a charity. Yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> the way I see it is, it's like a person that has multiple roles in a place. So, like, I have a guy that's a cook and a waiter. So when he comes in and he works the floor, he makes his floor wage and he collects tips. When he comes and works the kitchen, he makes a different wage. Yeah. So just because you own a place, like, if anything, I think it's a good thing that the owner's behind the bar and meeting the customers. Like, if you're just jumping behind the bar to help out for an hour or so, 
a bartender that you you've hired and they're in the weeds, that's different. Maybe you don't take a cut of tips. You hope they offer because you help them out. But at that point, you're an employee helping out. You're an owner. You're kind of doing your job, filling the gaps. But if you have a full shift, yeah, those are your fucking tips. Yeah, I don't, I don't see what any reason why you wouldn't. Right. Full shift, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I just have. There's like the cutest story I. Oh my god, it's the cutest the story. Cute, it was the cutest story. <laughs> I have a server, and we were just in the complete weeds. I was taking tables for her on her shift. You know, it was one of those days where you're like, we're never busy, and all of a sudden, like, the whole restaurant's full. So I'm just taking tables, whatever, giving her the tips from the tables that I took, and she offered to tip me out, and for my specific restaurant, I was like, you know what, I can't take a tip. I appreciate it, whatever. So next day, she came in and gave me a gift certificate to an ice cream place. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Right and I'm like, you, you know what? She's she's super young. It was super cute. I really appreciated it. It was like, hey, listen, I see you doing your job, helping me out. I know, like, you can't do that, but I'm still acknowledging the fact that, like, you st- if I didn't have you, I would be drowning right. in these tables. So as long as there's kind of, like, something... You know, if you're if you're if you're a manager and an owner, and it's not your shift to work, recognize that somebody f- that is higher up that doesn't necessarily have to help you is helping you, and we're all happy, and then yeah. we'll all come together every day on yeah. after that. Well said. That's all it yeah. is. Just show your appreciation. So. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You know, even if you can offer the tip, not I I help out all the time, and people offer me tips. I will never t- if I take. A dozen tables, I might take 20 bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, hey, If they're offering, not, um, I helped you. Yeah, I would demand. So, pay up, bitch. It's like. And then, and it shows that down the line, when you help that person, they're always going to appreciate it. Right. Not like somebody who pretends that they stop dogging it because they know you're in the building because they want you to help them make more sales so they get bigger tips. And that's, yeah. I've had a few people be like that. And that's kind of like roundabout to like a conversation we, you and I had like separately earlier about management. It's like, you can't be the know-it-all manager. Like, when you're the manager, you need to... And that... I was actually listening to an episode earlier today about um, That's the one turnover. listener right there. Huh? I said the one listener right there, Carl. <laughs> I was listening earlier. Um, but there was a question about, like, um, employer retention yeah. and turnover. And in my head, I was thinking, like, as a, as a manager, I want my staff to value me and to know that I value them. So, like, when I jump in and I'm running their food, taking their drink orders, knowing their numbers, helping them out, feeling like it's my job to do that, not that I'm, like, going above and beyond. Like, there there are managers managers that go both ways, that, okay, I'm helping you, I'm going above and beyond my duties. And then there's the managers that know that, like, that is actually... We're in this together. If we sink or swim, that's on me. Right. So I think that's a a huge part. And your staff recognizes that. And like I said, you know, I saw that tenfold when some 20-year-old girl came in with a gift ice card for me to go to get ice cream. Badass. No. Badass. Awesome and ice cream. She's my number one employee now. Now I won't talk about yeah. shit. Yeah. Uh, Kristen Rosenberg. Uh, anyone else get bothered by bartending in movies and TV shows like the pre- presentation and such? I find myself consistently wondering what the fuck is that drink? Is she a mixologist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever <laughs> watched that. There's that one video that goes viral every year. It's that, like, supermodel that's making it old-fashioned, and she does it in, like, a fucking pint class. Yes. You yes. Ever see that? <laughs> it's like an instructional yep. video. Yes. I would love to get that. I, you may have even posted that on the bar talk. I don't thing. think so. I don't think I've ever seen oh, that. Oh, my God. It's hilarious because she has no idea what she's doing. You can tell she's not a bartender. You can use life. the back of a spoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, she serves a fucking, like... Old fashioned or yeah, it's an old fashioned. I've seen this video, hundred percent. Pint glass, <laughs> yep. And she's sitting just three ounces of whiskey, and she's sitting there putting like seven <laughs> ounces. <laughs> <laughs> Straw in the bottle. So that kind of stuff's like, but it's funny. We yeah. all laugh tongue in cheek, like you know. But yeah, that's a movie, man. See, like, we're 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 more of the. What beer are they drinking in that movie? Right. You try right. to look the label. Oh, I know what that beer is. That's Sierra Nevada in the back. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I drive my wife crazy yep. with that. I shit. know that tap in. That's How about that's reality Nickelode. TV? You can tell by the teardrop bottle. Oh, I have that neon hanging up at yep. Speedwell. <laughs> it's like and wings neon. <laughs> reality TV is a huge influence for I know like the lady, the basic bitch ladies out there. The Karens. Yeah. The, no, not the Karens. Uh, 
no, the no, no. The pre-Karen. The, the Beckys. Beckys. <laughs> the Beckys. Beckys. The Beckys are watching The Real Housewives, watching them drink. Oh, I'll have a Casamigos on the rocks. <laughs> so then so all of a sudden you have an influx of, um, I'll have a Casamigos. <laughs> or it was Rosé. Rosé was a big one for a while because yeah, the, the rose Beckys. Yeah, the Rosé all day. Yeah. yeah. So, there's definitely a social media, TV, reality TV influence. Oh, and I remember when Mad Men was popular. We, couldn't, yeah. we were making fucking old fashions left and right. To I, probably kids who've never drank one, but they're yeah, like, yeah, oh, I saw it on through TV. Through it, it's like, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a good mixologist, you can make a nice... I'm a good mixologist. Yes. <laughs> was that when, uh, the f- first time I encountered it was when... Um, Sex in the City came out, and everybody was drinking, uh, like, Cosmos. legit Cosmos. Yeah, and it was, I had never made a, I made a lot of kamikazes, I had never made a lot of Cosmos, and this went early on bartending, all of a sudden, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I had 13 people at my bar, and 10 of them are drinking Cosmopolitans right yeah. now. It was because of Sex in the City. SJP, Sarah Jessica Parker's drinking yeah. her Cosmos, <laughs> so I drink like mine, too. <laughs> 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 guest is drinking water, club soda, etc., along with their cocktail, and you notice it's running low, do you refill it without asking, or do you take the time and possibly interrupting them to ask them if they want to refill it? What? Just refill kind it. of question Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that? Start, start from the beginning. So someone's... I dozed off on that one. Someone is drinking <laughs> a non-alcoholic beverage. Oh, you just fill it up. Refill it. Yeah. Fill yeah. them up. Yeah. As long as you're not charging them for it. Well, I mean, if they're sitting in the bar drinking it, you don't refill it. You just say, okay, next. When I used to bartend, I used to pride myself on having... You gotta know your your clientele, but if you know someone's gonna come in and have four or five, I like I liked having their next drink ready, but like an alcoholic drink ready. But when it was like a soda, you just fucking keep feeding them. Yeah, like, yeah, okay. because that's, that's gonna that that like induces their longevity at your bar. Right. Especially the yeah. more they're drinking if they're drinking, we're talking about somebody that's just drinking but, non-alcoholic. Right, but no, I'm no, saying like yeah, yeah. if it's you're <laughs> if you're like if you're gonna yeah, if there's yeah. yeah. that kind of person that's gonna drink water throughout their drinking liquor, like personally, if I'm drinking yeah, that's, that's something else. coupling water or soda water with liquor. I'm probably gonna drink longer because I have something else right. occupying my I've oral actually, fixation. I've had bartenders right. where you had to like be like, I'm gonna have two more and then stop because he was so petrified that people were gonna leave that he, like you'd be halfway through your drink and he'd just put another beer in front of you. So you, gotcha. And it's hard to say no, I'm good because they just did that. You can say that. Smart. I say it all the time. Yeah, no, no Andy, done. you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's like, I'm only having one, we get five more. Time. Always, I used to do that all the time. Yep. Trap bartending, dude. It's fucking awesome. Pretty sure I've done that to you, so. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever had someone be like, can I get my tab, and you just put another beer in front yeah. of me? Yeah. I've had Castle that Island and, many uh, a time. Uh, Castle Island, High Def, and Space Cakes you used to just put in front of me. Yep. Yeah. And I would sit there and drink, they're like 8% alcohol by yeah. volume. And, and you'd be like, I'm done. Yeah. And they'd be like, you're done when I say you're, you're done. done. <laughs> and, like, and you're like, okay. She, probably. Because <laughs> I'll have another one. She doesn't. <laughs> Sometimes. <Anymore. laughs> now that you moved away. Yeah, now that you moved away. Uh, yeah, I moved away. Angela yeah. O'Brien writes into Carl, I recently let an employee go uh, because she was just doing a horrible job. She worked for me for about a month. The reason I gave her was she's not a good fit. Uh, she went in and filed for unemployment and succeeded. Uh, this happened last month. We recently found out she lied on her application about her previous employment. Uh, how do you fight that? Like, have you... You can't fight it. If you fire somebody, they can go for unemployment. Yep. Yeah, but you can go in um, what they call arbitration, where you go on yep. a, uh, a sort of a group call, and you can argue their case. My former employer did that when I went and bought another restaurant. Um, when I, they, they didn't want me collecting unemployment, which I felt like I was entitled to because they essentially laid me off. They didn't want me working there anymore, knowing that I had a restaurant open in six months. And we had this arbitration call, and I won. I, was like, I worked there for six years. Uh, they laid me off, knowing that I was leaving in six months, but I'm, I still want to work there. So, um, But I won. But then there are certain people, like if they fudge an application or something like that, you can win. You can 
win an arbitration on, on, if you want to go through that process. Well, it depends on what you fight him for. You can't fight him because it's not working out and then say, well, they lied on their application. You have to fire him for lying on exactly. the application. Exactly, and once she already went through that process, or he, I, I didn't, I'm sorry, I think it was a she, right, Angela? Sure. Yeah, yeah. so once she went through that process, <laughs> right, it was Angela O'Brien, right? I deleted it already. <laughs> uh, I remember but, uh, yeah, once she did that, you can't go back and call arbitration and be like, oh, I just found out she lied in her application. Now. Correct. You're fucked. You know what I mean? you got to pay that. Right. right. That's your own due diligence. Uh, Christian Velasco, any tips on how to bring people into a new restaurant? That's kind of like me right now. Yeah. But doesn't everybody want to go to the new restaurant? Everybody wants to try out the new guy on the block? Um, so here's... You have to get your name out there, though. Yes, you do. that's what we're going through right now. Do you know what I don't understand? Oh, is. God, here we go. That's a whole other <laughs> podcast. We don't have time. How to read people's names. Yeah. What, what? <laughs> <laughs> How to buy a round? <laughs> Fuck you guys. You opened up the door. I know, <laughs> but assholes. <laughs> so, like, Chick-fil-A, Five Guys. Uh, corporate, corporate. Corporate place will open, and there'll be fucking lines out the door. Right, because... The advertisement, the new, clout, But most of those people, most of those clout. people Clout's are under 21. one word. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true, I suppose. So, like, so, uh, sorry, I'm going to, like, capitalize on this just because this You're is my... You're the guest, man. Yeah. You're the guest, so, so this is kind of, like... So, 3B. Yeah. Okay, so this is a perfect example for this question. If 3B. If you have to be, go to 3B in uh, Quartz Park. Thank Quartz you. Park. Shut oh, up. Yeah. So 3B, Unless you're Karen, then fuck you. Karen, <laughs> Karen, if you're listening, don't you dare come to 3B. I'm just kidding. Um, so 3B is the brain, ch- like actual child of all the Mamma Mia's Carmelas. So you, that's a, a well-known name in our area it's in Plymouth. Weird, like corporate, but still corporate, mom and familial, pop corporate. Yeah. familia yeah, restaurant. It's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a mom and pop corporate. You get your chicken would, it's farm. A it's a local mom and pop. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. So 3V stands for the third generation, so they want to do something different. Well, this is very new ground for everybody, so we open up, we get different chefs, we get different menus, people are confused, people don't know we're there because they're so used to a mom and me as a familiar Italian old school chicken. I want my chicken parm, I want my veal parm, I want my lasagna. So we've had a lot of battles with that. There's been a lot of, um, on my part as a manager, trying to incorporate local or trying to kind of um, assess what people that are in the community want to see. So, like, not to plug it again, but a knee yard. It's like, that's a Plymouth thing. I've that, heard of them. I've heard of them. <laughs> a Plymouth thing that I've heard of. Um, we have another, like, Plymouth photographer we're trying to work with we have Plymouth bartenders so hone in on your local roots and there's always going to be those local people who have bartended kind of everywhere that are looking for a new place like we have Luna we have Jim Agnew who have been everywhere never heard of them never heard of them they've been everywhere they have their following their following will go wherever they are um but you got to be on the social media. You got to be local, local, local. That's what, at the end of the day, I think is the biggest thing is incorporating everyone you know who's local. We have our local brew. We have Second Wind in there. Um, we have yet to have Mayflower. I would love to have Mayflower in there. We're here now, um, but again, we're new. Um, Dirty Water Distillery. Um, they're in one of our most popular drinks. So you you you've got to hone in on your local people and anything that you have to kind of bring the people who are already in your area who like those products and like those ideas into your restaurant. So yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like a weird popularity contest. Yeah, I mean, tot- totally. Yeah, you, you have to kind of find out who's big in town that you can work with. Yeah. And be like, bands. Let's, let's do something. Yeah, have, bands. Plymouth has some awesome, awesome local bands, some awesome local entertainers who have their following. Like, um, I'm going to name drop. Fine. Uh, Jeff Hilliard, who's always oh, yeah, at BBC, yeah. like he was one of our favorites at 3V. We brought him back for the winter um, because we know like he's a great guy, he's a great musician, he has an awesome following. So you kind of want to hone in on those things that Carl's booking dates. You should get him. Yeah, I'll, I'll sing. Yeah, yeah. Place what you, is? you almost want to make it seem like you've been there the whole time. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect, yeah. perfect yeah. way to put it. Like you just insert yourself, and you got to earn trust and stuff like that. But if you're able to hire local people, yeah, you already kind of got your foot in the door. You just 
Just Matt Odette. Like been there forever. Matt Odette, great person. Awesome person. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's the way it's sort of. And then networking is huge. You yep. got to get out there. Put the footwork in. Yeah, you got to put the footwork. You got to go to Chamber of Commerce. You got to join networking groups. You got to you got to give a little. You got to hold charity events. You got to instill yourself into the community because if you just come in and seem like a cash grab. People aren't going to support you. They may check you out because they're curious, but then they're just going to leave, critique you, and never go back. Yep. If you instill yourself in the community and you feel like people feel like you're actually a part of it and you're affecting their surroundings in a good way, they'll be more likely to come back and support you because they want to be part of the scene too. You right. Know what right. I mean? But I also think there's two things you got to do if you're a new restaurant. One, you got to market it. You got to get people in. Absolutely. However you do it, you have to get people in the door, and then you have to uh, keep them coming back. So everybody will check you out once, but if you can't keep people from coming back, or if you keep people from coming back, right. then you're just going to get, you know, you might not get a, a bad rep out there, but sometimes no rep is it's worse. worse. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, now nobody's things. talking to you. Exactly. Baiting them with things like putting in familiar bands or having familiar yep. um, staff is good. Harry Potter maybe, trivia. Harry Potter trivia. Yep. There you go. Or, <laughs> or maybe those first three months you're open, you, uh, and when you present the check to those people coming in, because... Let's be honest, they're all new customers. No. You give them something to entice them to come back, a coupon or a gift card or yep. something like Dreamy's that. Dreamy's got a cool promotion going on. Oh, yeah. It's like, like a, you get this red, like... Oh, and a secret, em- a like secret a envelope. envelope. <laughs> sexy envelope. Sexy envelope. So you have to go back in after You open day. it, and then you get a lap dance. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm okay. kidding. <laughs> that is not how Jimmy Agnew described it to me. <laughs> it's because Jim Agnew is giving the lap dances. Yeah, Batman yeah. onesie. Uh, but like, no, you have but to bring the envelope back. Yeah, in you bring the envelope back in after it's like a Christmas promotion. You you spend a certain amount of money on food. You get an envelope. You bring it in after the New Year, and you get. Oh, I'm gonna get a complimentary soup. I'm gonna get a complimentary dessert. Um, highest like. Most prized coupon is a dinner for two. But so like you don't know till you go. You don't know till you go. So yeah. it's like an incentive to be like, oh, I want to go back there. Right. Um, Until I heard it was a lap dance from Jimmy Hacker. Yeah. <laughs> and he's never going to play it again. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> Just playing that that's a coupon yeah. I got. Like, I need Jim Agnew should be on this show, he by the way. He was on the first episode yeah, recorded. So, yeah. He's a, First of all, yeah. he is like a Plymouth. Well, he's actually a Nantucket staple. He yes. works at like Current nine Plymouth restaurants he's here in town. Cur- juggles them all. Yeah. He's an awesome guy. Um, but yeah, doing all those fun things, getting people in there, um, following up, it's all good. Yeah. If you build it, they will come. Does not work. In the no, 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 not no. at all. Not at all. You've got to you've got to incentivize and. Um, Put the promotions out there. Get the right people in your door. Get the right staff on. Because once you... that's, that's It kind of all circles back to like that turnover. And one thing I'm thankful about for 3V is that we haven't... We still have a great group of people who have been there from day one. Who um, know that there's going to be good days and bad days. You know that you could walk in on a Tuesday afternoon lunch and not have the best lunch of your life. But come in on another day and make great money and make great connections and make those regulars who you're going to come up to me as a manager later on and be like, they come in every Saturday. They get this meal. Like they're, they're, they're awesome. They support us. So, um, value those regulars for sure. Absolutely. You hook them, you hook them early and then you value them. Yep. So, uh, I'm not- last call. <laughs> so what I was literally just going to say is I'm not saying this because I want to go get a pizza well pizza's here um, well, pizza. but uh, it's last call in case you couldn't tell because Carl's yelling at me lift those glasses I got and the high shift side. those asses my <laughs> favorite last call <laughs> is that's great no wait what so, I'm gonna I'm gonna right. cite Ramon from East Bay Grill who comes into San Diego's on Mondays what? and cleans everybody out by saying lift those glasses and shift those asses. So let's go around the table and do our normal <laughs> plug. And if you have a good last call, because that's fucking great. Right? So, uh, Carl, Heine. Carl Heine, New World Tavern, Plymouth Center. Come on Nine down. Seven. 213 lean pounds. Oh, you lost some weight. <laughs> yes. I've been working out. It's, like that, it. it's that detergent. Oh, yeah. that was <laughs> <laughs> uh, So come on down. Join us. Great music. Great people. Handsome owner. Um, 
Roman's, Roman's good looking. Yeah, I knew that was coming. I know. <laughs> so softball lob that one up. <laughs> I think my last call is uh, let's go, let's go. Sure. Yeah, it's my last call. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and that happens at about uh, you know ten thirty from you know if I have to go because <laughs> Lauren Otter's on at eleven. I like to get home for that. You know? <laughs> SVU. Okay, boomer. <laughs> Dan Mahoney. Dan Mahoney, Stats Bar and Grill. Uh, shout out to Joanne for my mom listening to this podcast. Oh. While doing yard work. And I just say, give me your money and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him. Uh, Jordan Javitt. Jordan Javitt, Speedwell Tavern. Uh, it's been a while since I've closed the bar that I work at. Um, but I think the last time I did the last call, I just count down. Ten minutes! Did you do like a second countdown, like five, four, just like people rushing up to the bar? If I have, I've been really drunk while doing it. <laughs> That's someone else's bar. But I don't bar. doubt I've done it. <laughs> Nicole, our guest. 3V, San Diego's. Lift those glasses, shift those asses, install a bell. Uh, we have a bell at San Diego's. You ring that thing until people literally can't stand it like anymore. Cattle. <laughs> <laughs> Get out! Get out! Shame. Three V, we just kind of let you hang out until we're done hanging out. But Sam's is like, it's one ten. Get out! Hell yeah! <laughs> uh, so this is Andy from Inebriar. Uh Thank you guys for listening. If you want to write in your questions, because we love answering your questions. I mean, we sort of answer them. Uh, <laughs> BarTalkCast at gmail.com. You can find us on social media at BarTalkCast pretty much on all the social medias. Instagrams, Twitters. If we multiple don't medias. Twitter, we're on Twitter. Multiple Instagrams. If we don't have it, Jordan will say enough to Twitter, make one. Facebook. Grindr, the <laughs> Snapster. The Snapster. TikTok. Yeah. Tinder. Pornhub. T- we should totally <laughs> what start the, a... The casting I was couch. Gonna, I was going to say... Wait. I was going to say... Because I was gonna say a uh, what was the one you said? Snapchat. Uh, and then Jordan said Pornhub, and I started to speak, and it sounded weird. So but. typical. The casting couch at Pornhub dot <laughs> bartalk dot com. I'm like a uh, pornologist. <laughs> You're a pornologist. <laughs> follow. That shirt, you sure as hell. <laughs> see the, like see the Christmas Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> look, look at girl <laughs> Every porn producer. Melekalikimaka. <laughs> uh, I don't know where that came from, but I'm a watcher. Uh, you're a watcher. Watcher. Weird. From a closet. Um. So thank you to everyone for coming out and recording with us, fighting through a very. Uh, variety of uh, hangovers and whatnot, and uh, Nicole's gonna be. Having I'm hungover now. Yeah, you're hungover now. <laughs> she got there now. <laughs> this will be the last bar talk of the year, I'm assuming, right? Uh, we're already into next year, dude. Oh, this is next year's podcast. Yeah. I hope everybody celebrated. 20, yeah, what year are you in? Yeah. 2020 Frog Pilgrims. So any? Uh, so I know we did the last call, but is there any uh, New Year's resolutions, Carl? No. Nicole. Um, be <laughs> be less be less angry at Karen. At Karen, except Karen for who she Karen's is. <laughs> play play Karen. Play Karen for all she's worth. Dan, any New Year's resolutions? I don't like to make promises to you, Andy. So no. Jordan, live. I got. I got. Don't get on. electrocuted. <laughs> That's really difficult. <laughs> from what we understand. As long as I make it through a lot. <laughs> Just make it to 2021. Do the best you can. Yeah. And to make it to 2021. Uh, our New Year's resolution is to uh, provide good content for you listeners. And Get Pain Away as a sponsor. Pain Away. Yeah, please we're Pain Away on board. That's a good resolution. <laughs> and uh, we thank you for listening to this nonsense. Thank you, Mayflower, we'll for having us. Yeah, thank you, for Mayflower, for having us. Mayflower Cheers. And we'll see you guys next time. All right, thanks for listening to the podcast, and you can get us on the internet uh, on all social medias at inebriart, uh, except for Instagram is at inebriart6. Uh, you can email us, inebriart at yahoo.com, with all your questions, comments, and complaints. And if you're looking for other podcasts, you can check out the other podcasts on the Inebriart Network. We have... Uh, 
the good book. We have Retro Redoctopus. There is America's Hometown Horror. And, of course, Bar Talk, Old Colony Cast, and Inebriart. Um, so check those out and subscribe and comment. And that helps us reach more people. So thanks for listening.